Hello. Well, this is my first video. Um, today we're going to design a DC power supply. I've got a little diagram here to show us all the steps, all the components we need to accomplish the task. You see here we have an, an AC voltage being fed into a step down transformer, power transformer, at a 1 to 16 ratio. So for every turn on the secondary side there's going to be 16 turns of wire on the primary side from 240 volts that'll be stepped down to 15 volts and this is coming straight from the main supply if you're in the US or Canada the main supply is at 120 volts at 60 Hertz if you're in New Zealand Australia Solomon Islands or Europe it'll be at 240 volts and 50 Hertz uh, these are RMS values by the way anyway from here we're going to step down the AC voltage using our transformer to about 15 volts from this point on we're going to use rect uh, diode rectifier or rectifier diodes that's going to be our foot to produce our full wave rectification and well yeah it's going to produce uh, sorry it's going to lead to a unipolar wave a unipolar voltage now from this point on we need to smooth it out a bit we're going to use a um, capacitor as our filter and uh, of course here this, you're still going to have a little bit of a ripple and the, the ripple will be about half a volt now to reduce the ripple we're going to use a voltage regulator that'll reduce the ripple and also get us at our desired voltage um, we're going to aim for five volts five volts and a maximum load current of 30 milliamps okay let's get going here is a schematic I drew up to accomplish our task we've got our transformer part here our step down transformer uh, this part here is our diode rectifier our full wave rectifier we've got our filter here accomplished by the capacitor and we've got our voltage regulator accomplished here by the Zena diode it's also called a shunt regulator so called because it's in parallel with the load from here our main supply is being fed into the transformer it's being stepped down this is a, a center tap transformer so the center of the transformer is grounded we've got 15 volts AC being produced on this side and the other side when it goes through its negative step positive voltage negative voltage during a positive uh, positive cycle of the AC wave diode 1 will be switched on and during a negative stage diode 2 will be switched on and diode 1 will be off they alternate on off on off the unipolar wave will be produced at this point here it's going to be fed into the capacitor the capacitor as mentioned before will produce a more smoothed out voltage however it will have a ripple of about half a volt that's going to be fed to the, uh, the voltage regulator uh, who's and so the purpose of this one is to produce our five volts a very, a very constant five volts hopefully five volts and a maximum of 30 milliamps will be thread through the load Uh, you know, each of these components probably deserves a video on their own. So, if you want, don't you can mention it at the end of the video. Oh, you know, just make a request if you want to know anything, uh, another demonstration, or anything about this particular setup. If you want to know more about the capacitor, how the capacitor accomplishes its tasks, let me know. I'll, we'll do a whole video on that. But um, this one sort of shows what each of the opponents can do 
And if you want to focus on individual ones, let me know. Our first step now is to work out the resistor value between V1 and V2 and also the capacitor. So these are our two variables. These will help us meet the design specifications of, as mentioned before, 5 volts across the load and a maximum of 30 milliamps being fed to the load. Now on to our next step, working out R and C. Okay, before we work out the resistor and capacitor values, I just might mention that um, the reason we stepped the voltage down to 15 volts is because 15 volts gives us enough to work with with respect to the rectifier and regulator operation. In addition, it is also low in the PIV value. This is the peak inverse voltage rating of the rectifier diodes. Uh, for the diodes I'm using, they have a PIV value of 400 volts, so we've got nothing to worry about there. If you exceed the PIV value, the, upper, the diodes break down and they no longer function as required. So that's something to take into consideration when designing a circuit involving uh, rectifier diodes. Okay, here is the equation we're going to use to obtain our R value. It's going to allow us to feed in the design criteria to produce the value we need to accomplish our goal. We can see down the bottom here the load current maximum, which is 30 milliamps. The current flowing through the Zener diode minimum, which we're going to use a minimum value of say 5 milliamps I'll explain why later VC minimum the minimum voltage across the capacitor and uh, VZO RZ and IZ minimum well that's this section here is basically the voltage across the Zener diode I'll go into these values a little later on so basically what this top part here what the numerator tells us is the voltage difference across V1 and V2 divided by the total current flowing through R of course will give us the resistor value which for this setup is going to be 400 and uh, approximately 430 ohms okay the VC minimum the minimum voltage across a capacitor will be 21.2 Let's straighten that up. 21.2, of course, is uh, the 15 volts RMS multiplied by the square root of 2. Okay, then you're going to subtract 0 0.8. 0 0.8 is the voltage drop across the rectifier diode. Yeah, well, it'll be approximately 0 0.8, somewhere between 0 0.7 to 0 0.8. It's rated for a 0 0.8 voltage drop. 0 0.5, well that's going to be the the, rip, uh, the ripple voltage, uh, the, the ripple, yeah, ripple voltage that um, we have, we, we've had a guess at, which we're going to say 0 0.5 volts. So that's the minimum voltage across a capacitor, which is going to work out to be about 19.9 .9 volts. Okay, so we're going to work out the VZO value. The equation for this one here, you've got the, the Zener diode is rated for a 5.1 volt. Five point, it's rated for 5.1 volts at a test current of 49 milliamps. At this particular point here, the RZ value, which is a, a dynamic value, is dependent upon depends upon the current flowing through the diode is going to be 7 ohms okay so VZO is going to be about 4.8 volts the RZ value of course is um, given by the manufacturer of the diode here RZ is 7 ohms now we're going to use a minimum current flowing through the resistor 
of 5 milliamps and again I'll explain why we're going to choose 5 milliamps later maximum current 30 milliamps okay you feed all that into the equation to get 430 ohms okay our next step is the capacitor